resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my friends. Super happy to be here back with you again at the Artist Next Level podcast. Always a pleasure to be here week after week. Well, my friend, I want to start with a question. Are you on Sachi Art? Are you listed on Sachi Art? Have you ever wondered if you should be on Sachi Art? Or maybe you are on Sachi Art and nothing has happened and nothing's moving. Maybe you wonder, like, you know, what should I be doing to make it better, right? How can I get, how can I improve my listing on Sachi Art? I see other people selling but I am not. Well, my friend, this is the podcast for you. This is the episode that you don't want to miss because I'm going to have a conversation with none other than Rebecca Wilson. She's the chief curator and VP art advisory at Sachi Art. She's the head honcho who oversees all the curatorial work that goes through Sachi Art, through the doors of Sachi Art. So definitely, if you've been wondering about Sachi Art or if you are on Sachi Art or maybe if you've been doing good on Sachi Art and you want to improve, you want to listen to this interview that I have here for you today. But before that, my friend, I just want to invite you, if you haven't done so yet, maybe you have heard about Breakfast with Sergio, or maybe you have seen other people that talk about it. Well, my friend, I want to invite you, if you have never uh, visited my show, my uh, my video show, Breakfast with Sergio, please go and check it out. All you have to do is just Google it, Breakfast with Sergio, and it's a video show that I do two to three times a week. 10 minutes max, super short, super straightforward. Each episode brings you, you know, one practical advice for your art career, one marketing advice or studio advice or practical advice, always something for you while I have my breakfast. So it's super cool. If you are on Instagram, just follow me at Sergio Gomez Art. That's where you will find every episode on my IGTV. If you are on YouTube, just go look for Sergio Gomez videos. If you are on Facebook, Sergio Gomez Art as well. You'll find me there on Twitter, everywhere else, my friend. On LinkedIn, you can find me there as well. Or just Google Breakfast with Sergio. I would love to have breakfast with you next time I'm on it. So check it out, my friend. Totally free. Super cool. Breakfast with Sergio. I want to see you there. All right, my friend, let's talk about Rebecca. She is my guest for today. So Rebecca Wilson, as I mentioned, she's Chief Curator and VP Art Advisory at Sachi Art. She was formerly a director at Sachi Gallery in London, where she was instrumental in the launch of the gallery's online presence. In 2007, she created New Sensations, a prize for art students which identifies and supports the most exciting emerging artists in the UK. Prior to joining the Sachi Gallery, Rebecca worked for 14 years in book and art magazine publishing. She was editor of Art Review and before that, deputy editor of Modern Painters. And I'm sure you have heard of both publications. She has nearly two decades of experience working with emerging artists, and I am super excited to have here as my guest, Rebecca Wilson. Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing today? Very well. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much for being here at the Artist Next Level podcast. Now, Rebecca, are you ready to take us to the next level? I think I am. Let's hope we can get there. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, you already are at the next level, and that's why you are here in this podcast here with us today. Super happy uh, you know, to have this conversation with you. I think we're going to talk about some topics that our friends are going to really enjoy, and they will also want to share this episode with their friends as well, because I think uh, there's a lot to learn from you. There's a lot that you have done uh, for yourself as a uh, as a, a professional, but also for Sachi Art, and that's kind of like the topic that we're going to be discussing today. And um, so, Rebecca, now, today you are in LA, is that correct? Yes, I'm in Los Angeles, and um, Sachi Art's uh, office is here, in fact. We have 35 mm -hmm. people in our office in Santa Monica. Um, wow. And yeah, so this is this is the, the, the hub of the business. Oh, really? Okay, so you go back between LA and London? Is that kind of uh, your typical... Travel? I do, yeah. Um, I go to London, uh, which is where I'm originally from. I go back mm -hmm. to London three or four times a year and also go to New York, occasionally to Chicago. And yeah. um, I'm lucky with all the travel that I do. And very often it's um, uh, in order to do special exhibitions and mm -hmm. to 
meet designers uh, who are interested in uh, some of the artists' works that we represent mm -hmm. at Saatchi Art. And also, um, we run the other art fair, which takes place in mm -hmm. Chicago, as you probably know. And right. it's also in London and New York, and um, mm -hmm. also actually in Sydney and Melbourne and Australia. And in Dallas, we launched this year. So we do travel quite a lot, and it's so important mm -hmm. for us to meet artists and hear what their concerns are and what their needs are and how we can help them more and also to really bring together a, a community of people who really love art and are looking for it mm -hmm. and want to buy it because of course um, you know artists need to be sustained financially right. through the, the work that they're doing and um, and I've always liked being in this kind of facilitating role mm -hmm. um, where you know, I, I and the rest of the team here, we're, we're really here to help. We're here to help artists, and we're also here to help people who love art and, and want to want to purchase it. Absolutely, that's awesome. Kind of uh, you know, being in between the artists and also the collector, I think that's really great. I mean, providing the tools that you guys uh, also provide for all the artists to that make that happen. So before we continue talking about in that direction, let's uh, go back a little bit in time, Rebecca. If you can tell us a little bit about your grow up, growing up, and you know, how do you get interested in art? Um, I think maybe it's fairly typical in a way. Um, I, uh, I was really lucky, I still am lucky, to have fantastic parents. And okay. um, they really loved going to museums. And mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a, a smaller city outside London. Um, and they loved to travel to Europe, and particularly to Paris. Okay. And so we would spend a lot of our summers going to Paris and other places too. You know, we'd go up to London regularly. And the main thing that we did was uh, go to all of the museums. So from a very early age, um, I was what felt like at the time dragged around museums. Um, mm -hmm. but, and I, I came to really, really love it. And I can still remember all of those mm -hmm. works that we saw and we spent time looking at together and talking about. Um, so it was really a, a, such a strong kind of formative thing in a way. Um, so it got me, you know, it, it really just became part of my life from a very early age and I really, really loved it. But I didn't study, I mean, I was never an artist myself, even at you know, school, I was, that, that wasn't something I did, but I did play a lot of music. Um, mm. and played the piano and violin and I was really passionate about that but then I went to university and I read English and kept playing the piano but um, I mm -hmm. actually really had no intention of sort of getting into the art world when I left university um, I went and I, I worked for a publisher um, and I published okay. books for 10 years and then uh, while I was there it was an interesting moment in um, the UK because there was a lot of the Britpop stuff going on yes. the YBAs so mm -hmm. Tracy Emin, Damien Hirst, Sarah Lucas, and um, with that came a whole new way of writing about art, and there were lots of interesting uh, art documentaries on TV, and through my kind of uh, interest in all of that, I started publishing books on contemporary art, um, mm. and then kind of segued into working on art magazines. So I worked for uh, Modern Painters, which is a really okay. fantastic magazine about mm -hmm. art from all uh, periods, in fact. Right. And then uh, I became the editor of Art Review, which is still going mm -hmm. strong today and is a, a magazine really focused on contemporary art. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I was contacted by Charles Saatchi um, and asked if I would go and work for him. So I went okay. to work at the Saatchi Gallery for seven years. And, uh, and then uh, pretty soon after I arrived, in fact, um, we were brainstorming and trying to think of something really new and kind of radical that we could do that would shake up the art world and would really help artists in a way that had not happened before on a big mm -hmm. scale. And so we decided, this was actually in 2007, so it's going okay. back some years, um, and we decided that what would be really great would be to bring together the best aspects of um, uh, having a gallery represent your work, so really great curation and advice mm -hmm. and um, a network extending to all sorts of interesting collectors, um, but also to bring that together with the best things that the internet could offer. So, you know, with that, that would be, you know, you mm -hmm. suddenly kind of have access to the world. <laughs> You're not right. confined to one uh, main street in, in one city. So we brought those things together and um, 
we really did it uh, very quickly, kind of on a shoestring, and it just took off. We had mm -hmm. uh, tens of thousands of artists making their portfolios. Um, so that's how we started what's now Saatchi Art. Um, and as I said, you know, with 35 um, people making it all happen now here in LA, but it really started just as a as a slight experiment to see whether there was anything that we could really right. achieve for artists. And it turned out that yes, we could. Exactly. No, that's fabulous. That's fantastic. Because you and I, you know, we grew up in a time where there was no internet, right? You know, uh, now younger kids, uh, they kind of have grown up with the internet, so they don't <laughs> perhaps remember how it was like, you know, before the internet, which was a very different world, right? It was a, if you were an artist before the internet, you know, just have you had to go through the gallery, and then the gallery was kind of like the in betweener uh, from you as the artist, and then as the audience or as the collectors. But when the internet came around, and then when social media took off, you know, it, it just took completely changed the playing field. And now, you know, there's all this, you know, land of opportunity. And so it's very interesting, you know, how you as Insachi were able to, you know, visualize the future and say, this is something that could be potentially pretty big and let's do something about it. Do you remember some of those early conversations? What were some of the, uh, maybe a resistance that perhaps you you got at the beginning from the art, maybe even within the art world or with people that uh, were around you that didn't not understand yet the internet, uh, you know, could be such yeah, a big deal? Well, no, I think that's everything you said. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it was it, the internet was already having a big impact in terms of music and mm -hmm. even even more even more so than the art world. Um, uh, in the kind of design world, it was getting you know it's being embraced, but the art world was very very slow to catch on. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember when we when we first started doing it, people really thought we were crazy, and uh, <laughs> the, they thought this idea that you know you should be showing all your work online and then uh, mm -hmm. people come and buy it was just kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> And uh, but we really persisted with it, and and I think mm -hmm. um, you know what you were just saying about you know life as an artist before the internet, um, mm -hmm. and I I feel there is still a slight sort of nostalgia for that time in a way. But um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean it used to be that if you were an artist, you either had to be um, a really a really good sort of marketeer of your work, and you know the YBAs mm -hmm. I mentioned before, people like Damien Hirst, they were in right. a sense the first. Uh, generation of artists who really did take that upon themselves and they were very very good at doing it but if you weren't that kind of artist you would mm -hmm. leave art school or let's say you you hadn't been to art school or you were a bit further along in your career but things had slightly stagnated um, mm -hmm. then you would just sort of be stuck you would be in your studio and somehow in some miraculous way a gallery would have to just come and discover your work um, mm -hmm. because galleries don't like having artists sort of knock on the door and you know show exactly. it they really don't like that they want to feel like they've made a discovery so it really became um, such a it was such a limited uh, experience for an artist and I you know we always felt um, which is one of the reasons why we started it that there mm -hmm. were so many fantastic artists if you went to MFA programs you see all these amazingly talented artists really making um, experimental work um, that you hadn't seen before and then uh, a few years would go by and they they would just disappear um, mm -hmm. and so I think that that idea that you know you you could somehow find a way of um, you know taking your destiny into your own hands as an artist right, and being right. proactive in a way that actually would turn into something rather than being proactive going around to galleries and just being told no um, right. And this is one of the things I'm still always saying to artists, although, of course, it's got much, much easier over the last five years. Um, but, you know, say yes to things. Say mm -hmm. yes to having a portfolio of your work online. What's the downside? There is no right. downside. Um, you know, we, Saatchi Art is constantly being combed through by brick-and-mortar galleries, and, mm -hmm. you know, they're offering artists exhibition. I could draw up a list of 100 or more artists I know in the last year who've got shows been invited to show at art fairs or get residencies, and it all has originated through the mm. online gallery, Saatchi Art. Um, and I'm sure the same is, is the case right. for the online gallery. So if you, yeah, if you can sort of break beyond that thinking about what it is um, to be an artist um, and recognize that there's now this whole layer of fantastic opportunities that if you embrace them, all sorts of amazing things can happen and you can actually begin to earn a, a, a proper living as an artist for your your incredible talents. Absolutely. You know, I totally agree with that. And, you know, as I talk to artists as well, you know, a lot of times 
what I see more and more, and maybe you've seen this too, uh, you know, as time goes by and our generation also gets older and so on, uh, you know, artists who perhaps, you know, were very comfortable because a gallery or two or three were representing them at some point and really didn't take the time to really get into, you know, the social media, to get into the online platforms and so on. And all of a sudden, now they come and say, Sergio, guess what? My gallery just closed. Now, what should I do? I, I, I don't know how to do, you know, the online. I don't know how to do the social. And that's the thing. It's becoming as aging galleries uh, become, you know, also part of a... Uh, of the cycle, right, of, of things. Mm. You know, I think a lot of artists are uh, in that situation where, you know, this is the time in which the tools are there, uh, like Sachi and many others, you know, in which you can, you know, just with your computer and even with your phone, you know, get online and get your presence online. Get, and what I always like to say, be seen to be remembered. If you're not seen, you're not remembered, right? And uh, that is so important. Uh, I would love to talk to you about also the dynamic of, you know, when we talk about, again, the very briefly the comparison before how it used to be to how it is now, you know, because now we're in the internet and now because we are, have this access, you know, some of the barriers that sometimes were very prominent before now also uh, open up in some way. So, for example, you know, if you're a person of color, right, or uh, mm-hmm. if you're a woman, or if you, you know, the, all these sometimes that you were judged by how you looked or, or where you came from or where those things, which many, in many ways prevent you access to a certain sphere. Now, because the internet doesn't care about those things, doesn't see about such, uh, uh, you know, barriers of entry, it, it becomes a, a much, a much fair uh, game, I would say. I totally agree with you. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that um, we have uh, been sort of very pleased about mm-hmm. over the last few years, and we've sort of been monitoring it very closely, is um, in particular how many women uh, mm-hmm. we represent at Saatchi Art and, and um, the percentage of sales mm-hmm. at the end of the year, how, you know, how many uh, works by women and how many by men. And it's about 50-50, in fact, last oh, wow. year it was, that's, it, that's it was more, more women than men. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it's really, really fantastic because, you know, there are all these reports that come out about, um, you know, what mm-hmm. I sort of refer to as the traditional art world and, exactly. you know, all houses, they tend to be run by men or the, the people right. making the major decisions tend to be men and, um, mm-hmm. you know, Art Forum for a very, very long time had a male editor, uh, a lot of blue chip galleries, the people who are mm-hmm. making decisions are often men, although there are a lot of women who actually do the nurturing and uh, really work very closely with artists. It's often men who are making those decisions and you know you would ask them and say well you know why do you have so many exhibitions by men or you'd say to the Mm -hmm. forum editor why do you feature so many uh, male artists and they say oh because that's what sells and that's Mm -hmm. just a self-fulfilling thing because if if your network and your close circle is a load of male artists and um, you right. keep on pitching them, and then of course those are the ones that are going to sell. But what's really fascinating, as you said about the internet, it's mm-hmm. much more of a level playing field. And this idea that people somehow are only attracted to buying works by men is, is utter nonsense. When you right. give them the opportunity in a very, very carefully curated environment, which is what we try to create at Saatchi Art, it's not just mm-hmm. sort of Etsy free for all. We right. have eight curators who are uh, doing their jobs very thoughtfully. Um, mm-hmm. But when you when you present that to people, they come in and they buy work because they like it, and they right. are, they are also interested in the story of the artist and you know what they've been doing, what their achievements are, what their background is. Um, mm-hmm. But there's no sense whatsoever that they are just uh, like a magnet, kind of drawn to only the men. So it's mm-hmm. really really interesting, and I think that the um, the sort of traditional art world are now mm-hmm. having to kind of catch up with this and work really, really hard to make a difference uh, within mm-hmm. a particular part of the art world. And, you know, we still have a long yeah. way to go in terms of diversity, and it's something that we talk about right. probably every day. Um, mm-hmm. And we're trying to partner with interesting groups so that we can expand that and give more um, people an opportunity and to give them access, as you say, um, mm-hmm. which is so important. And it's not that there aren't... Um, really great artists out there we just mm-hmm. have to make them feel welcome and find them yeah. and give them the attention that they deserve 
Absolutely. And you mentioned something about, which uh, I'm so happy that you, you mentioned, about the curatorial team that Sachi has, right? Where you say it's yeah. not a just upload and everybody is, you know, just upload whatever you want and it's just there. Um, but there's a sense of uh, curatorial space. There's a, there's a, a certain level uh, of uh, uh, also professionalism that needs to be reflected in, in the images, the work that's up there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? You know, how the curators go about uh, looking at the work that's uh, that's uh, submitted to um, Sachi Art, because I think this could also help artists right now who may be looking into the platform, who may be thinking, you know, what kind of art should I put up there? Um, you know, those, some of those tips I think will be really, really valuable, Rebecca, if you can help us out. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, so we, um, as I say, we have a team of eight curators here, and mm -hmm. I look at every work that is uploaded um, every day. Um, wow. So, uh, as an artist, you should know that uh, mm -hmm. you're not just um, kind of dropping your work into a big ocean. People yeah. are looking at it, um, and we're very, very experienced um, in terms of uh, recognizing uh, really exciting work um, of mm -hmm. whatever kind it is. Um, and I think that's one of the interesting things about our gallery as opposed to, let's say, a, a brick and mortar gallery that represents 12 artists. Mm -hmm. um, we represent artists making every single kind of work. So as a curator, it's a different kind of um, project. Uh, it, it's not so much about um, this is, you know, Rebecca Wilson's gallery representing 12 artists and that that kind of uh, represents her vision as much as the vision of those artists. It's not like mm -hmm. that. We're trying to really kind of recognize the incredible bre breadth Mm -hmm. um, of work that's currently being made by living artists and mm -hmm. to understand that there are um, so many tastes amongst collectors and we want to try and marry those two things together. So from a curation standpoint, I look at every single work that is uploaded and then we have a, a, a very extensive detailed editorial calendar so that every day um, mm -hmm. There are certain collections that we put together around theme or price or different kinds of works to help okay. collectors see groups of works um, and uh, get a sort of deeper understanding of specific artists and mm -hmm. uh, specific kinds of uh, abstract painting, let's say, that we might focus on. So we have to do quite a lot to help collectors um, see uh, works in smaller groupings Obviously, they can then go off and explore down the rabbit hole themselves, but we like right. to curate these collections. And right. then we feature them in all sorts of different ways. So we feature them in emails that we send to um, collectors and designers, which is increasingly a big opportunity, I think, for artists. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also do a lot across social media. So across all of our social media channels, we have over a million followers. Um, wow. So the scope uh, in terms of, uh, you know, eyeballs and who is going to be discovering your work is absolutely mm -hmm. huge. Um, so that's a very, very exciting opportunity. Um, I recognize that obviously Sachi Art is big. There, mm -hmm. are lots of, there are lots of artists, which is why we do those smaller collections um, mm -hmm. that I mentioned. And we try and think about them sort of thematically. And we also do... Uh, features just on one artist or just a handful of artists. Um, we do a special annual feature called Rising Stars, which uh, focuses mm -hmm. on graduates from MFA programs. Okay. Um, so we, we are always trying to do things that, um, that, that get smaller groups of artists uh, to have some attention. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's really how we go about it. We also do a, a printed catalog that we send out uh, six times a year. Okay. Um, and we are always being asked to do special projects, um, uh, exhibitions, and um, all sorts of different things like that, where we recommend uh, specific artists who we think would be appropriate for whatever it is. Hmm. Very interesting. Now that's awesome. And I assume some of the like behind the scenes technology is a lot of AI that kind of uh, learns about the person viewing the work, so kind of understanding what he or she may like, so to show that person more of what he or she may be interested on? Yeah, there's a, there is a little bit of that, but that, um, okay. yeah, I mean, I think if you're as a collector, as opposed right. to coming in into the site as an artist, I mean, as a collector, we, right. um, 
we try and make sure that the experience is obviously a very, very high quality one. Um, and we do lots of work to um, make that the case in terms of um, highlighting really exciting work, you know, whatever it might be, whether it's uh, figurative or abstract or installation or neon pieces or whatever it might be. So, you know, with the technology, we, we're able to sort of do that. And we do do some recommendation. Um, so if you've liked this work, you might like these five works. But the really interesting thing about art is that it doesn't necessarily work like that. I think those algorithms okay. that Amazon um, and other uh, e-commerce platforms use, they don't necessarily translate terribly well with art. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we do as a kind of, um, to get around that, um, mm -hmm. is we actually offer a completely complementary art advisory service. So mm -hmm. okay. this means that you, yeah, you can get in touch with us and, um, it's a really great thing for artists to know about um, because we work with um, probably between us about 50 new clients a day. It's a mm. lot. And these, right. are, these are people who I would say most are fairly new to buying art, but some are very seasoned and you know, go to lots of art fairs and extremely well educated and informed. And they, mm. they come to us and they ask for our recommendations. And mm. um, they might have a budget in mind. They might have a specific kind of work that they're looking for. They might be interested in uh, recent graduates. Um, okay. And then what we do is we uh, select maybe 15 to 20 works that we send to them as a, as a sort of um, bespoke package that we do just for them. Um, mm. And we do that, uh, as I say, for about 50 new clients a day. And we don't charge for it. Uh, we okay. feel that it's part of the kind of uh, doing something different in the art world. I mean, no, normally an art advisor would charge about two hundred and fifty dollars an hour, right. um, and we want to make uh, for especially for people who are new to this world to really make mm -hmm. it a, a rewarding uh, experience and to help them get sort of get educated about uh, what they might like and why they might like it and begin to feel comfortable asking questions about art, mm -hmm. and, and that all comes with the art advisory service, which which we offer for free. Absolutely, which uh, I have seen the website too uh, for that, you know, the web page for that. And I think, you know, yeah, that is really, really valuable for any anyone coming in to buy either an experienced buyer or somebody who has, like you said, never purchased yeah. art before. And this is totally new territory, which is fabulous. Um, Rebecca, I have a question that probably is going to help also a lot of our friends here is like, what are some of the tips that you could provide to our friends? Here in the artist's next level, who may already be on such art, but like you know, what are some of the next level uh, insights, tips that you can help an artist to you know to keep their presence fresh, to uh, get the most out of uh, such art? Um, well, I think um, you really it does really pay off if you put quite a lot of effort into it. As with most things, you know, the more right. effort you put into it, the more you're likely to get out. Um, right. So I would say, you know, really taking care to photograph your work really well um, and then, uh, you know, being fairly active, um, not only on our site, but on social media and tagging back to our site can be incredibly helpful because then it gets a kind of a nice synergy going and we can we can help to dry, direct even more of our um, our network of collectors to, to mm -hmm. an artist's work um, and, and perhaps uploading new works every few months. Um, because what that does is it um, means that uh, curators are going to, at Sarchi Art, we're going to be seeing your works fairly frequently. And it also means that, you know, if a um, collector starts following your work and then you add mm -hmm. something in, let's say, another two months or three months goes mm -hmm. by and you add some other works, we send out a, an email notification to that mm -hmm. person saying that, um, you know, you have some new works. And then, right. you know, that, so that kind of thing really, really helps. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, even though this may be stating the obvious, um, sometimes we get artists who upload their works but they don't put any information about themselves. Mm. Um, so there's just nothing. And I, you know, right. sometimes somebody might buy something just because they really love the look of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But usually people do actually want to know who is this artist and, yeah. you know, what I, I need to know a little bit of their background. Have they done exhibitions? Have they done art fairs? Are they self taught? Yeah. What's, you know, where have they come from? all of those things that can really help um, create a stronger connection with the work. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important as an artist that you think about that. Um, you know, this isn't just a, uh, it, you have to really think of it as a kind of curated gallery. It's not just some sort of 
internet platform where you can right. just put stuff and see what happens. It's, it's, so it's not a it, yeah, it's not a drop box. Right? No, you no. Set it and forget it. <laughs> exactly, and I think sometimes because it because it is online, uh, mm -hmm. there's a tendency to perhaps think that there that there isn't much care going into it on our side, and it's quite the opposite. Yeah. As I say, we have 35 people here. Um, right. We have eight curators. And in addition to curating the site, doing all the exhibitions that I mentioned online, mm -hmm. um, running the art advisory service, we also have a team of four people who focus on hospitality projects, which is another mm -hmm. really exciting okay. area for artists. Wow. So this could range from doing a huge 100-foot suspended ceiling installation in an airport to doing 400 guest rooms in a mm -hmm. hotel in Mexico, um, right. all sorts of uh, incredible opportunities like that, which we, we now work on um, recommending artists to designers and architects as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an incredible amount of care and thought that is going on from the office in Santa Monica. Another mm -hmm. thing that I think is helpful for artists to know is that yeah. um, we have a team of eight people in our operations team, and what the, those guys do is they take care of shipping. Mm -hmm. So if you sell a work, or if we sell a work for you, uh, we send you shipping labels, they arrive in your email, all you mm -hmm. have to do is print out those shipping labels and pack up your work, and we send a courier to come and pick it up. So this means that you don't have to spend time going down to the post office and right. figuring out, you know, what's the shipping going to be and all this kind of stuff. We take care of it for you. The insurance while uh, the work is in transit is taken care of mm -hmm. for you. So those are really great things for an artist to know that you just don't have to worry about. Um, and you can then keep making work and not have to be kind of... Um, you know, detained by those sort of more administrative things, which is what we what we do for you. Dive um, into that, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, you have given such uh, you know great tips there because uh, you know when a, a website as big as Hachi are, you would think that well, you just upload the artwork. Who knows who's going to look at it? But just the fact to know that there are actually curators within Sachi look at looking at every work of art that gets uploaded. That gives an incentive for artists to continue uploading versus you know what happens sometimes like you you any new platform everybody gets excited they go you upload it you leave it and you forget it right but knowing you know those things i think it helps then maybe it's a good idea not to just batch put everything at once but kind of batch it and and let's say every month as you say a few pieces exactly yeah i think that's incredibly helpful um okay yeah, yeah. just to sort of keep things fresh and top of mind and as i say you know we immediately start sending out emails to people who've expressed an interest in your mm -hmm. work so um i think that's a very good strategy awesome now i know Sachi has been growing and you know online platform and then social media came about and as like you said you guys are super active on social media as well i see also you do a lot of uh, online advertisements so that you know people who visit your site if they're looking for something you know they they can continue seeing the brand so you know stay on top of mind which is great you know to attract more collectors to your site but so, something that now you also have expanded quite a bit is the other art fair so tell me a little bit of, of that uh, you know how did uh, Sachi Art get interested into art fairs and uh, how is it how's it going so far Oh, it's incredibly exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, for a long time, we um, really kind of uh, discussed in great detail the idea of, of doing uh, live events and how could we um, have a kind of in-person experience um, yeah. that would sit really well with everything that we're doing online. And, um, you know, in the early days, we did a lot of art fairs and we'd take a booth and uh, show maybe 10 artists. Um, we did Basel and Miami and New York and we used to do a lot of that kind of thing um, and then actually from my time in London I knew Ryan Stania who was the founder of the other art fair and uh, we'd always talked and wanted to find a way to work together and then mm -hmm. as, as Sachi Art grew um, it really seemed a good moment to come together and the reason for that is um, the other art fair is shares very much our, our goals and you know mm -hmm. that it, it's a fair for artists it's not a fair for galleries yeah. so the great thing about the other art fair is that you know artists can apply and um, you're not dependent on a gallery knowing about your work in order to be able to show it an art fair you can apply um, mm -hmm. and for each fair in each city there's a panel of judges 
um, three or four judges. I'm always one of them. I get the yeah. I'm very lucky. I get to sort of look at every everybody's awesome. work. Um, yeah, and um, and then you know we make a selection of uh, between 100 and 140 artists to show at the fair, and and then you're there as an artist. You're hanging mm -hmm. your work. You're meeting collectors. Um, and I think sometimes it, it's a little nervous making to start with, but then most artists, they really, really get into it. And I can't tell you how much people love actually meeting the artist who's made the work they're interested in. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really um, transformative experience because, you know, maybe you and I were lucky enough to go to artist studios and get mm -hmm. close with the process that an artist goes through to, to make a work. But for most people, that just doesn't happen for them. So this right. is the closest that they might get to it because they can ask the questions about you know, how the work was made and um, and it's just a very, very nice thing to bring together people mm -hmm. who all really, really love art. Um, so yeah, it's going really, really well and I think it's um, what we're now also finding, for example, in we just did the fair in uh, Brooklyn and um, one of the nice things is we've grown the fair, especially in in America, is the number of artists who have wanted to come back to the, to do another fair because they've done so well. Um, but now what we're finding is um, uh, word of mouth is really spreading and the reputation mm -hmm. of the fair is spreading. So this time, actually, in Brooklyn, 55% of the artists were new. They had not shown at the fair before. Wow. And that was incredibly exciting and uh, pleasing for all of us because it really means that... Um, as I say, you know, the, the reputation of uh, the fair and right. all of its benefits is, is really kind of getting embedded widely into the community of artists. So, um, and it also means that, you know, Saatchi Art, as opposed to the fair, we're now also discovering all sorts of new artists who we can right. recommend for some of the projects that I've mentioned, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a hotel mm -hmm. in Canada and it's just um, Canadian artists that we need to find or um, I'm doing something in Mexico and they really want to have artists from uh, Latin America and artists then you know mm -hmm. this is a great synergy between the two of us we're helping each right. other and of course the main thing is that we're really helping artists and that that is the that's the mission that we share which is why it's so mm -hmm. great to be working together that's fabulous that's awesome and you know I have been to the one here in Chicago of course every time that it comes here I think it's been twice uh, if I believe uh, that uh, yes. the, the opera has been here so I'm looking forward to have you guys again and uh, continue to see it grow which has been great yeah absolutely we loved being in Chicago and it's such a rich community of artists there yeah. so yes yeah, such fantastic work um, yeah. it's really exciting for us excellent well, uh, Rebecca, I did uh, on my Instagram, I did a post uh, and I said uh, that you were going to be on the show. And if anybody had a question to send me a question, somebody who wanted to ask you something, uh, you know, about uh, about side GR. So I was going to pick a random uh, question. So I have one here uh, from okay. my Instagram from Asa. The artist's name is Asa Falk and she's from Asa Falk Arts on Instagram. And she said, so here's her question. It says, what do you look for? when you are searching for new artists? Is it originality? Uh, that is a great question. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it's a few things that I'm looking for. Um, okay. The first thing is I want to have some sort of visceral experience with the work that I'm looking at and for it to stand out in some way. And, um, you know, I think that can be something that happens both um, offline um, and also mm -hmm. online. Um, so I want to feel that it really that the work stands out, and that it's um, something that I uh, I haven't quite seen before. Um, I may be able to sense um, influence in it, and I think that's totally fine. Of course, that happens whether you're reading a book or whatever kind of um, cultural experience you're having. You're going to pick up that there are influences that have come from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I'm always really interested in the background um, uh, and what is the artist's story and I think um, a lot of people are because it's a way of really um, getting a connection um, and finding sort of meaning and something that really resonates with you um, mm -hmm. and I'm also interested although you know I, I tend to buy if I do buy work by, um, mm -hmm. work by emerging artists so I'm, I'm quite interested in which art school an artist might have been too, but I've also bought works by artists who didn't go to art school, and that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, I love the work, and that's also fantastic. Um, so I would say th 
those two factors and then of course the execution of the work um, how has this work actually been made uh, what are the skills that have gone into it um, and very much connected with that question about um, process and skills is mm -hmm. um, what are the ideas that have gone into making it um, and I think if you're an artist who's really going to develop and grow in exciting ways, you need to have a you need to be an artist with a rich pool of ideas. Okay. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm looking for. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see just one work and um, it really speaks to you, and um, you just really kind of fall in love with it. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't like the other works that an artist is making. It's you know th there are so many different um, reasons for actually making a purchase. And you know I'm, I, I also help a lot of people who really just fall in love with something and they like it because it's it's quite kind of beautifully decorative. And I think that's mm -hmm. also fine too. But um, yeah, for for me personally, it's to do with um, ideas, execution, something that really stands out, and then the story um, of the artist, him or herself. Awesome, that is a beautiful answer, and I want to say also thank you to Asa for sending that question, which I think uh, is a great way to uh, start wrapping up the the program today. So Rebecca, you've been so awesome. I mean, the, every question that you've answered with such great detail and you've been so helpful for our friends. I think after this episode, a lot of us are going to go to Sachi Art and update our, <laughs> update our profile, take a look at what we have and uh, really get hands on, uh, you know, because just the value that you provided today. And I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? To help our friends uh, to be better at what we do so that we can spend more time in the studio, right? As you mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is not a pastime. This is not just for fun, but this is uh, to make things happen for artists so that artists can get their work out there into the world in the hands of great collectors that can, can come back again and again so that at the end of the day, we can you know, continue working in the studio doing what we love. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what that's what we're here for. And we're very, very happy to help artists. You know, we're, we're it's an online gallery, but we get on the phone and we love to meet artists in person at the fair. And, you know, we're really here to help in whatever ways we can. Awesome. Well, Rebecca, before we close uh, really quickly, now something completely outside of Sachi Art, more of a personal question for you. What is one thing that you love to do that has nothing to do with art? Oh, um, this may sound really curious, but I really like lifting weights. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I go to uh, this famous gym in Venice Beach where I live, uh -huh. called Gold's Gym, the place where Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and all those guys used to go. <laughs> okay. I'm extremely skinny and puny. Uh, you know, my, my leg is about as wide as one of their arms. <laughs> but I love doing it. It's a great mental... Um, uh, absorption and distraction uh -huh. from everything else and yeah I just I have a great time there that is awesome out of all the answers that would never have imagined that one <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is super cool but I think you know you know that this is it was just a random question but is the stories that we tell that connect us to people on the other side right and I think when it comes for us as artists to connect with our audience is those little stories that sometimes we think are insignificant but that make a, such a huge difference on how we connect with people on the other side. I and totally when, agree. And when we open up, you know, a little bit, just with little things like this, you know, all of a sudden now, now we're human to the rest of the world and, exactly. and uh, it makes us more connected. So thank you so much, yeah. uh, Rebecca, thank for you. doing that for us as well. Well, where can our friends uh, find uh, Sachi? Of course, SachiArt.com. I think every artist knows that website, but uh, what are some of the places we can find it also on social media? Um, well, you can... Uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, yeah, all of the Everywhere. above are on Facebook, Everywhere. yeah, and SachiArt.com, come okay. to the site, yeah. and if you're not already on SachiArt, there's lots of information about how to get started, and it's very straightforward, we try to make it simple. Super. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for being here, it's been a great episode, I know you're busy, you probably have, uh, just in this, uh, while we had this conversation, probably there's already a bunch of uploads on Sachi waiting for <laughs> you to look at. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm lucky I get to see so much fantastic art in a day. It's amazing from all over the world. I know, right? Wish yeah. we could, we, um, now you're going to start getting like, hello, Rebecca, in, in all the submissions. <laughs> <laughs> I that hope is, so. <laughs> that is fun. Well, thank you for all being right. here. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. We're going to say also uh, thanks to all our friends who listen to this podcast. My friend, if you enjoy this episode, 
I would highly recommend that you do one thing, and that is to send it to a friend. We all know uh, another artist who could benefit from this conversation, from all the value that Rebecca has shared with us. Just do us that quick favor before you go anywhere. Just click share, send it to a friend, say, hey, you have to hear about this. If you're on Sachi, check it out. Or maybe if you're not on Sachi, check this out because it's going to help you, uh, you know, get better results on the platform. So thanks so much for listening, and I will see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.